Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you are the God that changeth not. The same yesterday, today, and forever. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Yes, Lord, we have come to worship you. We have come to praise your holy name. We have come to adore you, Lord, because to you alone belong all praise, all worship, all adoration, and all honor. My Lord and my God, your children are gathered together once more again in your presence to praise your holy name. Father, thank you. Thank you for tonight's gathering. Thank you for your power that has been made manifest at this hour. Thank you for your Shekinah. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that has come down in this worship. My Lord and my God, pour out your spirit upon your children now. Let your spirit begin to fill your children now. Let your glory so fill our arena, Lord, that we are soaked and drenched in your presence. We are soaked and drenched in the Holy Spirit. Lord, we claim all powers for you now. We take authority, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We take authority, Lord, over our gathering tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Every power, Lord, that is not of you, Father, may they be dethroned now, may they be rendered powerless in the name of Jesus Christ. We take authority over the north, the south, the east, and the west. We take authority, Lord, over the lands, Lord, where we stand at this hour. Father, let all power, let all authority, all dominion belong to you, my Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, the anointed one. Thank you, Jesus, the dear Lamb of God who is seated on the throne. The one that is called Savior Anointed, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We thank you, Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, the Promised Helper. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are about to do a great thing in our gathering tonight. Give us a heart of flesh. Take away every heart of stone, Lord, that your words will fall on our hearts, germinate and bear fruits. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit increase in me while I decrease. Holy Spirit increase while I decrease. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord. Thank you my Father. In Jesus precious name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father. And to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning. It's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to welcome us to tonight's ministration. And tonight, we shall be hearing from the Word of God. And tonight, we shall be talking on a topic I have titled, By the Grace of God and by the Power of the Holy Spirit, Prevailing in Prayer, the Ministry of Prayer. Prevailing in Prayer, the Ministry of Prayer. And we shall be taking a reading tonight from the book of Zechariah. Zechariah 12, verse 10. We're taking our reading from Zechariah 12, verse 10. And I'll be taking the reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, the Catholic edition. Zechariah 12, 10 reads, And I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him. 
as one weeps over a firstborn. This is the word of the Lord, and we say thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, tonight we shall be dwell, we shall be talking on a topic that is very, very important to you and to me as children of God, as a people called by God's holy name. Prayer is the center of our lives as children of God. Prayer is the ingredient that we need on our Christian journey. Prayer is the food that we need to persevere on this journey. We cannot stress enough the importance of prayer. You would agree with me, dear brothers and sisters, that for um, a few Christians, only very few of us would be able to, to, to come to God in prayer without being given a prayer point. Some of us, when, um, when we are not in fellowships, we are not in gathering of others praying, we, we cannot pray. We cannot pray. We cannot, we cannot communicate with our Father. But how easy it is for us to pick up communication lines with our friends, with our loved ones, with our family members, but yet we find it increasingly difficult to communicate with us with our Heavenly Father. You and I today are called Christians. You and I today call on one name that has been given to man, and that is the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. The name that is greater than every other name. The name that is higher than every other name. That it is by this name that you and I are saved. It is by this name that we find our salvation. It is by this name that you and I are saved from the oppression of the wicked one, of Satan, of his angels, and of all those whom he uses to manipulate the world. It is by the name of Jesus. And so that means Jesus is our perfect example for everything that we do because we are called to be like him. That's why you and I have that name today, Christians, which means Christ-like. And prayer, you would agree with me, was and is an essential part of Christ's life. When we look at Christ's ministry on earth, prayer was at the middle of it. There was hardly, hardly anything that our Lord Jesus Christ did. There was hardly anything our Lord Jesus Christ did that he did not pray. Every single decision that the Lord had to make, every prayer that our Lord had to do was centered even around prayer, came out of prayer, was born out of prayer. Before we go deep into this, my dear children of God, my dear children of God, it is at the place of prayer that anointing and grace anointing, grace, revelation, prophecy. It is at the place of prayer that all of this is birthed. All of this is made known. All of this is manifest. It is at the place of prayer. And my dear brothers and sisters, tonight, the kind of prayer that I am talking of is not the prayer of, oh, we are coming to fellowship or we are having the night's ministration, we come, we sit down there, we are listening, um, sometimes we doze off, we wake up, whatever prayer is said, we just say amen. While all of that is good, while all of that is encourageable, while all of that is the reason you and I today can say we know ourselves, that is not the prayer that I refer to 
here. The prayer that I'm referring to here, my dear brothers and sisters, is that communication with the Father. The communication with the Father is the most important prayer in the life of a Christian, in the life of a child of God. You cannot say you know God when you don't have that personal encounter, that personal time with the Lord. There are so many places in Scripture, but a classical example is where our Lord was, many of those times where he was teaching the apostles how to, how to pray. After he taught them the Lord's Prayer, he also made them understand that go into, don't be like the hypocrites, go into your room, shut the door behind you, talk to your father who is in secret, your father who is in secret, would hear you. We know that scripture. We all can quote it. So today, we ask ourselves and we see a congregation of Christians. We see a gathering of Christians who really cannot pray. Yes, we can all be in a gathering and everybody is, in, everybody is praying in the name of Jesus. Da, 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 and we are all praying. Yes, it's almost, it's almost like a public show. It is good. It is good. But if there is not that place of communion, my dear brother and sister, my dear children of God, my dear lovers of our Lord Jesus Christ, then there is no communication with the Father. There is no communication with the Father. There is no communion with the Father. Jesus, like as I said, is our perfect example. In Mark 1.35, we see how the Lord, if you go through the scriptures, before I, before I talk about Mark 1.35, if you go through the scriptures, especially the synoptics, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you would find out that every time, especially with Mark, Every time you would see that our Lord Jesus Christ would leave the people to go be somewhere by himself to pray. To go be somewhere by himself to pray. You have this example in Mark 1.35. Then again, right after the multiplication of the loaves, where Jesus Christ fed the, uh, the, 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 the 5,000 people, you, that is a Mark 6, 46. You'll see that right after that whole episode, that whole, that whole um, what do you call it now, that whole thing that happened to the people, that whole miracle, Jesus took time to go be with the Father, took time to go pray. Then immediately before choosing his 12, his 12 apostles, if you read Luke 6, 12, you would see this. He spent time in prayers. He spent time in prayers. All through, all through the night. In fact, the way it is put in scriptures, it's so beautiful. It, it tells us that for our Lord to have made such an important decision, our Lord had a vigil. He had a vigil. If you read that portion of the scriptures in Luke 6, 12, it says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. My dear children of God, we want encounter with the Lord. We want encounter with the Lord. I am sorry to say, yes, it will happen because God loves all. God loves all his children, no doubt, but he rewards those who are serious. He rewards seriousness. 
while it is beautiful to be in gathering where people are playing, but the place of deep encounter is in your one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. Is in the secret place. Is in that place where you are alone. Not um, uh, you are sleeping with one leg on the ground, the other part of your body on the bed, you are sleeping and waking and, oh yes, Lord, forgive me, oh Father, I thank you. No, it's a place. The scripture said deep is calling on deep. It is at that place, it is at that place of personal prayer that you and I can boast of revelations. You and I can boast of prophecies. It is at that place that the Lord can talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, direct. But that comes as a sacrifice. No wonder if you read or pray with Psalm 50 verse 5. Psalm 50 verse 5 says, It is like a reward that the Lord is given. The Lord is saying, that means there is a people. Psalm 55 says, Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. That sacrifice. That sacrifice is at the place of prayer, personal encounter, personal encounter. Some of us, sadly enough, may go through life and never have or never can talk of the Holy Spirit experience. Yes, we know it in our heads. Yes, we know it in our minds that there is such a thing called the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit experience and all of that. But do we earnestly go to God in prayer and say we want the gift of the Holy Spirit? And until that is made manifest in our lives, you and I cannot truly say we know Christ. You and I cannot boast that we know Christ. So it is at the place of personal encounter, a place of personal prayer, that you and I can expand, that you and I can grow. Like as I said, and don't don't be don't be misguided. Fellowships gatherings, ministrations, all of these are good. Doing Bible study for others, praying for others, all of these are good. But, there is a but. You have to lock up yourself in your secret place and pray to the Father. Jesus, the one whom you and I follow, the one whom you and I call on, the name Jesus Christ means Savior anointed. That means he is filled. He is filled, filled with the Holy Spirit. Always found time to communicate. Always found time to pray. The Bible tells us that when others were sleeping, when others were sleeping, Jesus often withdrew to pray. Look at Luke 5, 16. Jesus always withdrew to pray. You know, when you look at the life of Christ, when you look at, at the life of Christ, sometimes we do not, we, uh, uh, um, we tend to overlook that his prayer and solitude um, character. We often overlook it that there were times Christ would go be in solitude, be quiet, and be there praying. We tend to overlook that. We concentrate on his miracles. We concentrate on the very public ministry, so to say. But in Christ's solitude and silence, he be, he, uh, you see all of the manifestations of his earthly ministry. 
It was in these prayers and solitude that he began his ministry. And it is how he made important decisions. It is how he dealt with the the constant demands of his ministry. It is how he prepared for the death on the cross. Look at the prayers of Gethsemane. By the grace of God, we are blessed as a ministry to engage in the prayers of Gethsemane. But just before, just before his crucifixion and death, Christ was in Gethsemane. What was he doing in Gethsemane? He was praying. It was a place of personal communication with the Father. So to say he went to prepare for his death in Gethsemane. In prayer. You can look at Matthew 26 from 36 to 45. You can also get this in the Gospel of Mark 14, 32 to 14. And you can see this in Luke 22, 39 to 46. You would see that prayer was an important part of Christ's earthly life. Because he kept showing us how to do it. You know, um, that's why some of, um, I wouldn't want to call them Christians, even some Christians would say, uh, Jesus is not God. Jesus is the Son of God. That, again, is a different topic on its own for a different day. Uh, they would say, if he is God, who was he then praying to? Again, like as I said, that's a topic for another day. Because God wanted to show us the perfect way to God, he had to become man. The word was made flesh and it dwelt amongst us. God dwelling among his people. Emmanuel. This is what it is. You and I are called, my dear brothers and sisters, I would say it over and over and over again. The place of real encounter. The place of real encounter. The place of real worship is at that place of personal time with the Lord that becomes your covenant time. I am sorry to say that this may annoy some. If you only can pray in gathering of fellowship, then you are displaying hypocrisy. If that is when you can pray, you are displaying hypocrisy. Prayer as is being referred to here. When we come before God, when we come before the Holy of Holies, in the secret place, locked away from the activities of our daily lives, talked away from the eyes of the world, where we actually go to God in prayer, and we are not asking Him for gold or for silver, we're not asking him for land or houses. We're not asking for miracles. We're not asking for him to do this or to do that. But we are coming to seek his heart. The outside life may look all scattered. But the spirit man is strong, is solid in the Lord. That can only happen behind locked doors with you and the Lord. It is important for us to note that the church that you and I belong to today started on the wings of prayers. It started on the wings of prayers. We sing the song, uh, uh, Jesus started with prayers and ended with prayers. Prayer is the master key. Some of us, let us sit down and ask ourselves that question tonight. When is that time in the day? When is that time in the week? When is that time in the month that I set aside for the Lord? It is me and my God. 
a, a place of true worship. Some of us would call God names that we really do not even understand what it is because we hear others use it, using it. Elohim, Adonai, El Shaddai, uh, the beginning and the end, this, that, that. There is not an endearing name. I would give an example. Like, um, everybody may say, Oh, um, Brother Emmanuel, Brother Emmanuel, Brother Emmanuel. My wife, for example, will not call me Brother Emmanuel, may not even call me Emmanuel. She would have a name different from what any other person can call me. Not even the honey, darling, sweetie, whatever. She may just have a name that she calls me and no other person can call me that name. Can we as children of God boast of that endearing name that we call the Lord that we can only develop at a place of private prayer, at a place of one-on-one -on -one communication with the Lord? St. Ignatius of Loyola was one who, who was was who had a lot of ambitions for himself had a lot of ambitions had a lot of aspirations for himself he so wanted to be the knight the one who would who would uh, who would stand by the side of the king who would please the royalty and everything and would go to war and fight and become victorious that was the kind of public life he wanted to live and had no time for the Lord. Had no time. Until. When they were in battle. Against France. A bullet ricocheted. That hit a wall. And bounced back. And crushed Ignatius leg. And. Ignatius was seriously injured. Some of us might be asking. Who is Ignatius? who would have heard of priests who belonged to the Society of Jesus, or they called them the Jesuits, the founder of that congregation, of that order. And so he was injured and was bedridden. He was bedridden. They were treating the leg. It was not, it was not working. Ignatius had to beg for them to break the leg and reset it, to reset the bone. And it was not equal again, so he had a limp all through life, which is not the focus of us of our administration tonight. But while he was in that situation, he loved to read. He wanted things to read. He loved to read autobiographies. He loved to read about uh, different concepts because he was a good dancer. He was a beautiful dancer. He loved such things. He loved the theater and all of those things. But there was nothing for him to read, and all there was for him to read was the Bible and the lives of saints and he started reading it and first and foremost he got caught up with the story of St. Francis of Assisi and it turns out to be if you know these two men they, they almost lived the same kind of life they had the same kind of dreams and like Paul or when he was Saul on his way to Damascus, that encounter that he had with Christ was how these people encountered Christ. So Ignatius at that point encountered Christ. And that drove him into deep contemplation. Drove him into deep contemplation. My dear brothers and sisters, if you have brothers or sisters who are priests or who are religious as the case may be they will tell you that that is one of the congregation that takes the longest to train its priests while others may be between eight and nine years for you to enter the society of jesus and be called a jesuit it takes nothing less than 12 to 14 years because there must be that deep encounter there must be that deep encounter. If we go into the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, you will see he talks of consolation and desolation. And what is consolation? It's all of those times the Lord manifests himself to you. It's all of those times that revelations come to you. Personally. Not what... Uh, who? 
uh, when uh, uh, we were praying, you know, what brother Wakwe saw, what brother Simon saw for you, or what uh, sister Kelechi saw for you, or what sister God saw for you. It is, it is not that. It is at that place of private encounter, the consolations that come. Those are heavenly consolations. They come. But they only can come when you create that time. It's not when you, when you sit in the comfort of your house watching Netflix or eating the best meal. They are good. Those consolations do not come at that time. If you go deep into the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, you come to discover that that quietness, that time in the presence of the Lord, sitting down by, by yourself, alone in the presence of God and having all of those parts of scriptures of Christ's life reenacted in your subconscious. It enters your spirit man. Then the Lord is said to be communicating with you. You're sitting down there. You know sometimes we read the songs of songs of songs. You see it's talking. Some of us will see it as the the, the, the erotic poetry or that of, of scriptures where it's talking of the lover and the loved and things like that. Can some of us, very many Christians, can some of us say we have this kind of encounter with God? You're just sitting down there in the presence of God, enjoying that presence, feeling happy in that moment. Can we come to God? Can we have that quiet time with the Lord without asking, without demanding? How some of us want to rush through with prayers. We are conscious of the time. We don't want to miss an appointment. We don't want to miss this. We don't want to miss. If it is possible, especially in this part of the world that we live in now, we want to have drive through prayers. Just the same way you drive through McDonald's. Or you drive through KFC. One window takes your order. The other window you pay. The other one you pick up your, 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 your order and zoom, off you go. If it were possible, some of us would want that. No, no, no. That place of real encounter. How we, how we envy some who would say, Oh, this is what the Lord is saying about you. Oh, this is what has been revealed. The Lord is in the business of talking to all his children. Every single one of us. If all of us go to God, if all of us have a, 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 a quiet moment at the same time, have a private moment with God at the same time, the Lord can talk to all of us at the same time. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. But have we not become too busy? Have we not become too busy? Have we not become too carried away? There are certain graces and anointing that cannot come until we sacrifice or we expand. So when we when 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 we, we, we keep praying, we say, Oh, I want this, I want that. We are not praying to we are not praying to expand we just want to receive it becomes practically impossible for t to take a drum and to um, um, empty it in a cup right for that drum the contents of the drum to fill the cup that cup has to expand to the size of that drum to be able to absorb everything that is in the drum right So, my dear brothers and sisters, the place of encounter is the true ministry of prayer. It is the true ministry of prayer. We see in scriptures, the Lord tells us to avoid being hypocrites who loves to babble words, who loves to, who loves to to, to do this public show. Don't get me wrong. Praying. Praying out loud. 
for people as the occasion demands is good. But then again, I was listening to a man of God and he was also talking about prayer and he said uh, that we must pray because our weaknesses are becoming glaring. Our weaknesses are becoming glaring. That some of the answers to our prayers are ourselves. Are ourselves. We are not ready to give ourselves completely to the Lord. We are not ready. If we want to be honest to ourselves. Today. Have we spent time. A quality time. Myself, Emmanuel included. Have we spent quality time in the presence of the Lord? When I say quality time, it's not five minutes prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you do three Hail Marys. Oh, Father, watch me this day. I'm looking for this. Grant it to me. And immediately you, you, you dust yourself up and you, and you get up. While you're even praying the prayers, you're thinking of what meal to do or how to get to work to go and solve this and to go and solve that. Quality time requires that every other thing at that point in time is completely dead to you and the only thing that is alive to you at that time is God. Can we say that? You know, it is interesting. It is good. I, I, I talked about the church a while ago that the church was birthed on the wings of prayer. Even the ministry that you and I belong to today the Hearts of Jesus and Mary ministry was baited on prayer. We hear some of us come to give testimony. Oh, something just happened. And at 1 or 2 a.m. in the night, I, 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 I didn't know what to do. I sent a message to Brother Uwakwe and Brother Uwakwe said, I will pray for you. The man that answered the call that you and I belong to a ministry today called the Hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministry also is a man of prayer. That's why we can go to him or call him and say, Well, oh, brother, please can you pray for me? How is he able to do that? I've heard some people say, Oh, uh, is he even a human being? You know, I'll cast our minds back if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm wrong, please uh, shoot me a text and correct me. I think it was in two thousand and nineteen that our brother was made the professor of the year. That was when some of us knew that he had another life. He had a job outside preaching and praying. That was when some of us knew, oh, he's a lecturer, he's even a professor, he's been made a professor of the year. That was when some of us knew. We have heard him say, oh, if you take uh, which of the books, now I think the, uh, um, the prayer is against Python and uh, Snake Spirit, where he gives credit to his mom and said the, the, she was the one who found prayers into his life by her own prayers and why am I saying this is it only at the time of public prayer that our vision bearer prays with us online that he prays the answer is capital N-O I know I can say I have witness to it I have called at very odd hours and he was praying he was doing his personal night vigil. He was praying. Can we on our own, can we on our own as children of God, can we say, we do this? Can we say, we pray? My dear brothers and sisters, if we are looking for growth and we cannot spend quality time in the presence of God alone, I'm sorry to say, we're not, we're not going anywhere. Yes, God loves us. You may be looking for some things. Yes, it will come to pass in the season. But at that, that place of great anointing and revelation is the place of private prayer 
it is the place where you stand in the full authority of the ministry of prayer. That is why we see in Psalm 50 verse 5 that I was saying, and it reads, I'll quickly read it. It says, Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And that sacrifice is what we do at that personal place we are coming. We heard when our sister was ministering in songs, we can call that person a worshiper. We can call that person a worshiper. You come in in the presence of God. We sit down. We're praying. We're not dry. We're, we're, we're talking to the Lord in love. We're expressing our love. Lord, I have just come to be with you. Lord, I just want to enjoy your presence. Lord, I just want to enjoy and get to know your omnipotence. Lord, I am here for you. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, give me your heart. I want to know your desires. I want to know that which you are asking of me, Father. I want to know your will. I want to do your will. It is not the point where we are coming, my dear children of God, to talk about, to talk about, I want to buy a house. Which is the house? Oh Lord, there is this job that I'm looking for. Help me. That is only when some of us know to pray. That is the only prayer some of us know how to do. Die, 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 die. That there was this lizard that came to my window. Oh, all my enemies that are turned to lizard. Die, 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 die. That is not, that is not the prayer that I'm talking of. In as much as it, it, it when at that time that we're having, we're supposed to be having this personal time with the Lord. It is not a time for warfare. It is not a time for request. It is a time for real communication. It is a time coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, give me your heart. Lord, I want your heart. Lord, I want to know your heart. Lord, this is all about you and nothing about me. Is the giving of yourself. Is the giving of myself. And it is when that happens that answers to a lot of the things that some of us will say we are praying for for years, we are praying for for a long time. It is at that time that those answers, those things are taken care of. We say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added unto you. How would we know about the kingdom? How would we know his will? Thy will be done. How would we know what that will is? It's not just by going to fellowship, by marking the register. It is not even by preaching. It is not it. It is at that place of prayer. It is at that place of supplication. Why did I read or did we start our ministration tonight from Zechariah 12.10. It is evident to us in this place that prayer is a spirit. You pray to receive that spirit. We don't even want to go to the book of Job. Let us read Ze Zechariah 12.10 again. It says, And I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication what is supplication? Prayer. Some, some, some translations, instead of compassion, they would use grace. So it is a spirit that should be desired. It is a spirit that we must pray to receive. How many of us have really gone to, to prayers and not, we are not asking for anything, we are saying, Lord, I just want to know you. Lord, I just want to know you. It brings to mind, I've heard our, uh, our brother, the vision bearer says, um, it, it, there was a time he was praying, he would go for, for mass in the, in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening, he would go for mass. He said, Lord, I want to encounter you. 
not based off of what others have said about you or what I have read about you. I want to know you at a personal level. Reveal yourself to me. How many of us want that? We're too busy. We're chasing a lot of things. There's so many things. Yes, we live in a fast-paced society. We live in a society, everybody is talking about bills, 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 bills. There are bills to pay. There is this to do. There is that to do. Um, yes, all of those things are there. But, but, <laughs> where is that place of encounter? You can't go lay down on your bed and people are praying for you and, uh, oh, they are praying for me. Even the, even, even the one that is the, the, the man of God, if he doesn't pray, I'm sorry. He can be on the pulpit. He can be on the stand there talking. And you can almost see through that this person is hollow. This person is empty. There is nothing coming from inside. Ministrations, the things of the Spirit, is not revealed in... in uh, activities, especially external. When we look at even the life of Martha and Mary, you know, in modern society, we would say Martha is the well brought up one and Mary is the spoiled child. Yes, you had a visitor, an august one, an important one for that matter. You want to entertain you want to take care of and you're busy running about making sure the food is ready the drink this that that that, that putting everything right that was matter mary goes to sit down and is looking at the savior sitting at the feet of the master and listening to the master mary Jesus says, has chosen the better part. Matter you worry about things that do not matter. Maybe that's why her name is Matter. Some of us have grown used to that very busy life. And again, uh, 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 it, it brings to mind some of us busy ourselves so much. I remember it was one of my lecturers that said that some of us busy ourselves so much about the work of God that we do not bother about the God of work. We busy ourselves so much about the work of God. Oh, I am coordinator of this. Oh, I am the director of this. Oh, I am the, the leader of this. Oh, I am the leader of that. But there is not that personal, personal relationship. And we do that, it makes us feel good. We do that, it makes us feel all right. Oh, I am doing the work of God. Yes, to do the work of God is very good, but there is no personal encounter. All boils down on the ministry of prayer. It is not for one individual or a group of people, the ministry of prayer. It is at that personal Personal, personal, personal encounter. Personal encounter, personal time. That as children of God, we are fortified. As children of God, we are empowered. If Christ showed us the perfect way, anytime he needed to make any, uh, any, any important, important um, what do you call it, important decision, when he was meant to choose his um, um, apostles, we see it in Luke's Gospel. We see it there in Luke's Gospel, where in um, Luke six twelve, before he chose his disciples, he did a vigil, because it was something serious. They are the ones who handed on the traditions to us that you and I follow today. It was something serious, so he had to sit down. How many of us really do that? How many of us really do that? How many of us really do that? That's the example. He says we will do greater things than he has done on earth. Some of us just see, read those and, um, okay, it's just like one other story in scriptures. Yes, it is there. But that becomes, 
That is the most important thing in our calling as children of God. How many of us have prayed, I want to hear the voice of my Father. I want to hear the voice of my Father. Not from books. Not from ministration. Yes, the Spirit of God is in the gathering of God's people. Because it says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. Can you recognize the voice of the Father? Can you ascertain that this is is the voice of the Father talking that this is the voice of the Spirit. Again, going back to um, St. Ignatius of Loyola, in his spiritual exercises, one of the things you get to learn, one of the things you get to do, uh, uh, discernment, is knowing the voice of the Father and the voice of the enemy. It can come very, very deceptive for many years, for many, many, many years. Ignatius kept hearing the voice of the enemy, thinking it was the voice of, of, of God. Until the discernment came. Where many of us are lazy in prayer, where many of us are afraid to go to God, so to say, in private prayer, is because as at that time, at such times, we come naked before God. We can lie, I can pretend before the congregation and I'm praying and singing, waving my hands, crying, I say, oh, Brother Emmanuel is so holy, he's so this, he's so righteous, he's so fervent, he's so that, 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 lies. When at that place of personal encounter, at that place of one-on-one, -on -one, I cannot now pretend, I cannot lie because everything is before my creator. I cannot put up a show. I cannot put up a show. I cannot put up a front. I cannot, I cannot be strong. I cannot be any of those things. Come in all of your weakness, in all of your brokenness, in all of your emptiness to seek the face of the Father, to come worship God and be with Him alone. Where is your place of personal encounter? Yes, the house is busting with activities. You can make the bathroom your place of encounter. You can go lock yourself in there and stay in communication with the Father. Where is your place of encounter? The house is busting with activities. You can go to your garage, lock it, be there alone, and sit with the and sit in the presence of your God. Pour out your heart of love to the Father, not in request, not in request, all in the quest to know God, all in the quest. You come to the Father and say and 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 discuss and say, Lord. This is a daughter. This is your daughter asking to hear the voice of the Father. It is not too much to ask. I know of one of us who told us when who told me when she was going through a difficult time, a really difficult time in her life, in the life of her child and everything. There were times she would sit down alone and pull another seat and said uh, Jesus come and sit down here and she starts talking if someone sees her at that time the person will say she's gone bananas that she's gone crazy but she was coming then yes there was the need for for her to cry to the Lord for an answer to a certain request but she built a relationship she built a relationship. She was confident. Lord, don't even come and stand. Come and sit down. Come and sit down. Let us talk. Because I do not have any other person to go to. I do not have any other place to go to. How many of us can boast of a relationship like this? That's why I said, when you call God a name, 
the way you would call that name, one would hear it and know that this thing is real to you. This is very, very, very real to you. I'll give just one example with every sense of humility. Thank God, thank God for a lot of us. I know more than 90, 98 to 97, 97 to 98 percent of us here had a Christian orientation back from home, back in Africa. And so to say, our uh, spirituality is different, and the way you and I would read the Bible would be different. And so when I, I relocated overseas and I became a lector, the first time I read in church, you know, at a point, you know, you read and you look up, you read and you look up. I, at a point, I, was, I, I, I got confused because like none of the people I was in a parish first and foremost I would say maybe we are like three or four blacks and the mass I go to I was the only black person and of course listening to me I, I have an accent that is different from what they ordinarily have but the clarity in pronunciation was there and so I noticed that as I was reading, nobody was looking at uh, the missiles or the missile that they had. All eyes were just fixed at, fixed at me. At a point, I almost got confused, almost was torturing. And at the end of the Mass, the guy who was in charge of evangelization came to me and said, Wow, so I was like, what, what happened? He said, you were reading and it came to life. You were reading it that you read, you were reading it like someone who really believed that it happened. I said, so you don't believe what it he, he didn't know how to explain it. He said, no, you were reading it with com uh, a conviction. That when the other judge, the first reading, before you know this is the word of the Lord. But, but you were reading it with conviction. I said, I, I just didn't know. I didn't know any other way to do it because the word of God is a life to me and I know it's a life to to us all here that's why we are even gathered here in the first place so these my dear brothers and sisters is just one of many examples where we can say we have a personal encounter a personal relationship a personal prayer life it is very, very important in the life of the child of God. It is very important. There is just no way. There is just no way. If you don't do it, if you have not done it, if you are not doing it, please, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ that you and I worship, have a covenant time with the Lord. Have a personal time with the Lord. Even if you say it is 30 minutes, even if you're going to say it is one hour, it is one one hour or one 30 minutes that you are not engaged in anything physically or mentally outside seeking the face and the presence of God Almighty. That will be a quality time. It is not a time that you're feeling tired. And you're sleepy. That will not be a quality time. It is a time that you're setting aside. You prepare for it. Just the same way. You would prepare. To go for a meeting with your boss at work. Or with. For any important appointment that you're going for. This again. Is the most important. Appointment. So we should prepare for it. We should prepare for it. I tell you honestly, the hearts of Jesus and Mary ministry would not be today. If the one whom was called to start off the ministry does not go to a place of private personal encounter, I am telling you, don't think it is what the singing ministry is doing just doing or what the Gethsemane our ministry is doing or what the board of directors are doing or what the intercessors are doing no 
it is at a place of personal encounter. One man was called. One man answered that call. And a promise was made. A revelation was given. And the grace for that revelation was also given. It is at the place of personal encounter. It is at the place of personal encounter. That is why it can be enduring. That is why from year to year it gets better. From year to year there is the movement, there is the upward movement from one grace to another. Only that can be achieved at the place of personal encounter. I am telling you, if I'm, I'm using him as an example, that is whom I readily can point to. If if there was not the grace, if there was not a place of personal encounter and replenishment, it would not be easy. I know sometime next year, this ministry is going to be 10 years old. And this pers one person has been doing ministration. If there was not a place of personal encounter that leads to revelations, that leads to anointing, you think it's easy to come every day to minister on the line and to pray on the line? I kid you not, it is no walk in the park. So you and I are called to be a people of prayer. You and I are called to exercise the ministry of prayer. You and I are called to be true worshippers of God Almighty. When you worship, I, it, there are some. There are even some, some, some times where we have difficult situations. I know I have had that kind of um, instruction given to me. Where you have difficult situations, they just say, "Don't pray. Don't even pray. Just go to, just go and worship God. Just go and be praising God." Forget about that problem. Just go and be praising God. There have been situations like that. Where people go, where children of God go to God in praise and in thanksgiving. And meanwhile, it's like their world was crumbling. How that situation got resolved, they don't even know. They cannot tell you. Typical example was Paul and Silas. They were in prison. They were chained. But they were praising God. They were praising God. And then they got released. So it is at that place of private worship. It is at that place they said a true Christian is revealed behind closed doors when the lights have gone out, when the windows have been shut. That is when our Christianity, that is when our relationship with God is truly revealed. Where we are not all gathered in one room praying, or on the line praying. When all of this is gone, when all of this is gone, it is at that place that we know a true child of God. Because at that time, why that personal prayer is emphasized, why that covenant time is emphasized, that is when the true hunger for God is made manifest. That is when the true hunger for God is brought to the surface. That is when you and I can sit down when you say, Abba, Father. When you say, God, it is coming from the innermost recesses of your being. And not just, Oh yes, Adonai, I worship you, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Master, da 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 like a child reciting poem. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's good for the edification of the people, but that personal one, 
that personal one that personal one let us remember look at scriptures I, I i gave us references from the synoptic gospels of matthew mark and luke if we look at it there are there, there were so many places so many places especially in the gospel of mark so many places that the lord would engage in an activity and the next thing he's going to be by himself to pray immediately before the transfiguration we see him in Luke 9:28 he goes to pray immediately before choosing his 12 apostles we see him in Luke 6:12 he prays right after he multiplied the loaves and the fishes he goes to a, 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 a place and he prays before he goes to die for you and for me he goes to a place and he prays before he even taught the apostles it was the way his manner of staying aside to pray that made them say if you look if you read um if you read luke 11, 11 1 you would see that when he had finished praying they said uh -uh, master teach us how to pray now that was when he taught them dear our father but you and i pray today so my dear brothers and sisters what should be our desire that the spirit of the ministry of prayer should come upon you and upon me with reference to Zechariah 12:10 it is a spirit that we should receive this spirit we should receive this inner hunger we should receive this hunger for God we should it said like like um, like the the uh, one moment i'll quote this place from scriptures they say like the deer that panted for running water so i pine for you my god right this is something we see in scriptures and you and i are also called to be like this like the lamb you and i are invited to come thirsty to come thirsty when you're thirsty you see water you drink and drink and drink and drink right that is how it is supposed to be for you and me that is how we're supposed to come to god the issue is me it's you it's not the request when we give ourselves when we give ourselves that request would be answered and so tonight we pray for the spirit of prayer we pray for the spirit of personal encounter the true spirit of supplication the true spirit of grace according to God's word in Zechariah 12:10. we pray that that spirit will come upon you will come upon me in the name of Jesus Christ and so my dear children of God we are going to pray you're going to go into yourself and pray sincerely from your heart not what Emmanuel is saying not the prayer that Emmanuel is praying but you're going to go deep into yourself and say Lord come reveal yourself to me Lord I want your heart Lord I want to hear your voice Lord I want to have an encounter with you give me the grace to seek you give me the grace to seek you give me the grace to seek you in all that I do put it in your heart and say I would look for that time I will create a time for my Savior I will create a time to sit in the presence of my God and seek his face my precious Lord and Father your children have heard your word tonight Father we pray to cultivate and be like our Lord Jesus Christ we ask Lord that you minister to us we ask for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that will create that time for you our God that will make that time Lord where we come to sit with you 
where we come to seek your heart, where we come to know you better. Lord, as your children are pouring their hearts out to you, Father, hear the cries, hear the desire, Father, listen to the hunger of your children for you, especially in this busy world that we live in today especially in this noisy world that we live in today, amidst all the cares and worries, my Lord and my God. We ask you, Father, to make yourself manifest to each one of us. Make yourself manifest, Father. Grant each one of us a personal encounter with you. Lord, grant each one of us a personal encounter with you. Father, we ask for the grace, not only to always be coming to you, when we need something. But Father, that will come to you in love. Father, will come to you in the spirit of I want to know you more. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my God. These words that you have spoken to your children. These words that you have brought to, to the knowledge of your children. My Father, my Lord and my God. May it germinate in our hearts and begin to bear seeds. Begin to bear fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to the the, the, the honest groanings of your children. Listen to the honest sighs of our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it now and ever shall be world without end. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. My dear children of God, we thank God for the grace that he has granted to us to fellowship tonight and for our reading tomorrow. We shall be praying with Zechariah 12.10. We shall be praying with Zechariah 12.10 that the spirit of prayer should be given to us. Pray for the spirit of prayer so that you can experience God at a personal level. We can experience Jesus and the Holy Spirit at a personal level. And as always, let us continue to pray for our vision bearer and our co-vision bearer, Brother Wakwe Chuku and Sister Chinyero Wakwe. Let us continue to pray for them. And let us continue to pray for the intercessors of the ministry, that the good Lord who has called these ones to the ministry of prayer, and all of us by virtue of our calling as children of God, that the Lord will continue to enrich each one of us, the Lord will continue to empower each one of us, the Lord will continue to give each one of us the grace and the anointing to come to him as our Father always. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. Just before we share the grace, this is to remind us that we shall all be coming back to this line for our time with our Mother Mary. We shall all be logging in immediately after this section is over for our time with our Mother Mary. May the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. May we share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.